Hey team, welcome back to part four of making your jab your best weapon. So let's dig into this, let's go. Hey team, welcome back to the Sweet Science part four of our jab series, the ultimate jab tutorial. Today we're gonna to look at some body shots and one of my favorite ways to create an angle with a jab. So just make sure you stick around for that. So, body jabs, we'll look at just being in range and being out of range. There's a few things that you should be doing when you do your body jab, okay? A lot of people, when they first do it, they jab up here and then punch down, like so. That's incorrect. You're taking your own range away from you when you do it. If you look here, here's my range. If I punch down, I can't hit the bag. We need to level change when we do that jab to the body. So it's not punching down like this. What it actually is, it's a bend of the legs, call it a level change, and I jab to the body from here. Now, looking back at one of the previous videos we've done, you'll notice my hand went from the side, my, my rear hand, my protective hand, went from the rear of my side of my face, sorry, to the front of my face. If I stay here, it's not necessarily wrong, this is just my little top tip for you, it's not necessarily wrong. If I stay here, there is a fairly clean path for a chop in the right hand. Whereas, if I level change, and that hand comes in front of my face, like so, there's more protection from there. So that's a top tip for you to work on. <coughs> yeah, one, two, from there. It's a bend of the legs, okay, and then a drive, yeah. Try not to do this, next top tip. You can, so to speak. A lot of people will go here and start the punch on the way down. If you wanna get, you can do that. If you wanna get power, level change, drive. <clears throat> yeah, so you can go one, two, that was on the way down here. That would become more of a flick though. If you want to get a good jab to the a powerful jab to the body, level change <coughs> and punch when you're down there. So let's have a look at that on a bag. So yes, you can just drill this. You can, you know, if you're getting the mechanics for it first, you can just be here. So we're talking about in range, okay? I'm not moving with this yet, we'll get onto that. So from here, I can just drill it, 100%. Want to make it a little bit more realistic, you want to be jabbing to the head first. Thinking about someone who's standing in front of you, you know, that they're defending your jab coming in. You do something repetitively, they pick up on the pattern. So you might want to practice some of the other jabs that we've covered previously. You know, your straight jab, your flip jab, your up jab, so more jabbing to the head. Maybe put a feint in and then go to the body. So you can be working all of the other jabs we've talked about so far. Yeah, and just level change from there. Try not to Lift your elbow as you do it. We spoke about this as a common fault previously. That's a hinge joint that can only go in that direction. Still wants to be underneath your hand, your elbow underneath your hand and send it from here. So, we we'll also have a look at this from out of range as well. I did accidentally do it in the previous clip. So, it's a movement step and a recovery step. Okay, so when we have a good base, good foundation, yeah, toe heel aligned, feet 45 degrees, knees soft, hands up, chin down, elbows tight, always make sure that your foundation is correct. If I'm just on the edge of range, I can shoot that shot to the body with a step. It's a movement step and recovery step. You could move the step and go with it, of course you could, but let's practice this for now. So, foot's coming in. Top tip, make sure you're not doing this. I've spoke about this hundreds of times. If I'm level changing and going forwards, there's a high chance you're gonna put your heel down. That's a break. 
yeah? As in a brake in a car or on a bike. Yeah, you, you stop your own momentum. Make sure you're going onto your toes so you can spring back again. If you go onto a heel, you can't spring back very quickly. Very common, make sure you're not doing it. So just from here, level change, and back up again. You need that push off your toe to get back, yeah? Make sure as well that you're not punching down and doing that. That's bad. You can see from here, lanes open all day long. Okay, so from here, make sure your hand is just coming to the front of your face as well from here. So again, it's something that we can practice on the back, mixing in, probing jabs to the head, then jab to the body as well. So we're back on the bag, I'm just on the edge of range. So I'm here, just on the edge of range. Probing jab up top. Probing jab up top. Probing. And back to the body from there. It's something that can catch people out. Also, when you go into the body, you can turn your thumb down like we've done on a slip jab previously. Uh, personally, being southpaw, I find this works really well against an orthodox. Jab comes in, I go to the inside of it and step in from there. I, however, I know most, of pe most people are orthodox, hence I'm demonstrating an orthodox. Yeah, range finding, just on that edge. Remember, to be super cool, that hand still wants to be there so you don't get caught on an incoming jab back again. Probing, range finding. Shot works beautifully. Let's also have a look at one of my favorite ways to create an angle off of a jab. So there you have it, body jabs are reasonably simple as long as you level change. Just watch for the common mistakes, leave the hand out here, all this sort of thing. So moving to another type of jab. It's reasonably intermediate level. Footwork, you're going to be required to change stance and switch. Change stance and switch. And if you want to know where that foot wants to go, if I stand in my stance, if so I'm facing you, my hips are facing that way. If I fall that way, either I'm going to face plant the mat or my foot will naturally go somewhere to stop me falling over. So I'm literally just going to fall. That's where your foot goes. Okay? Here. I'm not saying do this and fall, but if you want to find out where your foot goes, it's there. What it's not, it's not lateral. Okay? It's not level with your front foot. If you notice, I'm actually changing. Second part. Once that foot has landed, I'm going to replace that foot with my left foot and turn. Okay, if you're a southpaw, it's the same thing. I'm going to fall, foot catches, replace the, right, the left foot with the right foot and make this angle. And all we're doing is sticking a jab on the end of it. So, excuse me, I've always said on this channel that you want to be going same hand, same foot strike. But... So, yeah, this is a, in this case it's different. I'm going to go opposite foot, opposite hand foot strike from here. But that's when the shot lands. Notice it takes my head offline as well, and I make that sudden turn. Yeah, from here. I love creating this angle off this. Setting angle, oh, setting angles, setting the pattern, setting the jab from here. And go. Again, southpaw is exactly the same. And of course, we're going to the opposite side to what people expect us to go with a southpaw as well. You know, we as if we're facing an orthodox, generally we want to go around this way, and that's the way people expect us to go because they think all we want is the outside foot. Yeah. You can quickly make an angle off that. 
So, fairly easy to practice on a bag. The things to look out for are the footwork. Let's have a quick look. So here we go. We're gonna set the jab, set the jab. Remember the footwork. Okay, that's vitally important. You'll see I'm in lane two at the moment. What's gonna happen is I'm gonna switch in my lane three with a switch stunt and change the angle. Set the pattern first. And move. It's a quick movement. Okay, boom. And of course, you've got a nice hook or uppercut on the end of that. So, setting pattern. Quick movements. Now, again, south force, the same thing. I can throw my shot, step, and move. Set the pattern, set the pattern, and move. Another little top tip, when you do it again, it's very common, let me get in position, to go on the heel. See my toe is up there. Very common to put the heel down. It's don't land on your toe. Yeah. So you make that quick switch. And make that quick switch from there. Love creating that angle, especially as a southpaw. As a special bonus, just for you guys, talking about level changing for a jab to the body. It's not the best shot in the world, but it does catch people out. So once you start level changing correctly, people start to read it. There is no reason why you can't level change like you're going to the body, but punch up. Okay, often catches people. Um, some people are very, very lazy. They don't have a good, sorry, a good tight guard and they start dropping hands for a, a body shot. Not everybody, some people, okay? So there's no reason why you can't set a pattern for that. Now, of course, some people would turn around and say, well, why don't you just Fake the body and come up to the head. Absolutely 100% yes. At the same time, if you're setting a pattern of going to the body from here, there's no reason why you can't level change but just punch up to the head. I would recommend thumb down on it. Some people might say yes, some people might say no. There's no reason why I can't level change and punch up. Yeah, so I know this doesn't have a full length. So if I was punching to the body, it would be about here. I'd be up to the head from there. It's not the best shot. It's not great. But followed up with something else, it can be good because it catches people off guard. Obviously a backhand on the end or, or whichever. But ultimately, this is a jab tutorial, so we're not talking about the backhand. But yes, you could set the president going down to the body. Going down to the body, punch up, catch them off guard, and come over the top from there. It's a great little setup. Try it. Let me know how you get on with it. So there we have part four of the ultimate jab series. Two more to go. Body shots. You can train them on a bag, uh, you can drill them shadow boxing. A lot of people forget to use them when they start sparring them. They just, they just see a head and then they just punch up to the head from here. Don't do it, okay? Make sure you're utilizing attacks to the body as well. And a simple jab to the body can be enough to get someone to drop their hands. And of course, then that opens up what you wanted in the first place. So watch for the common mistakes, okay? Don't punch down, you're actually changing your range. I don't know if you can see this, I'll, I'll try and line myself up with the TV. If I punch down, I don't know if you can see that, but I'm actually further away than what I was from it, which is why I need to level change so I get to the same range. So make sure you are level changing. That top tip, hand comes to the front of the face as you do it as well. Look forward to part six, guys. Until then, train hard. Train safe, train intelligently, and I'll see you soon.